so a day for a school nurse is completely different day to day. Um, one day we could be doing immunisations, one day we could be doing puberty talks, one day we could be dealing with self-harm or um, anxiety and depression in a secondary school. Um, but it's so varied um, from day to day. It's kind of difficult to pinpoint um, often what we do. <laughs> I haven't seen too much like a slick way of getting a lot of services to that one child. Um, it often feels quite clunky, referring children into a service and then not quite sure where that referral's got to, whether they've benefited from that. But I think referrals take a really long time. So a child might come to you with a mental health need and then if you refer them into a service, it often takes months to get that referral through and then you you're kind of left with the, the gap in the middle of how, who's going to meet their needs. I'd really like there to be some sort of tool available for us to, to see the different services in Liverpool because um, I often think I, I want to refer about this but I'm not really sure who to refer to or I've, I mean I've been here over a year and I'm still finding out about services in Liverpool that I can refer children into. So if you have some kind of tool or website, um, like a service directory that, that has a list of, of who to refer to, key contacts within those organisations, um, I think that would be really useful, invaluable really. A typical day in urgent care is referrals from various healthcare professionals. We take referrals from the community services, district nurses, community matrons. So essentially we will take referrals for patients who need support in managing their day-to-day -day care. I will go out and clinically assess patients and just ensure that they are in the right place, being managed in the right way at the right time. In our team, we have therapies, so that includes physiotherapists, occupational therapists and um, technical instructors, and also social services, which has had a massive impact on the way the service has developed and the services that we are able to provide. I suppose what I would say is people have different priorities in terms of values, and that's when it, is, it, it can cause friction. But I think ultimately, we do share values and we do try to get to the same point we may just come at it from different perspectives but I think as professionals we manage to overcome that reasonably rapidly because we have to put our frictions are really or our issues are unimportant in terms of where the patient is it has the patient has to be the priority and that and the, or the same issues that they have to be in the center of everything Murphy, I'm 75 years old, I'm Martin's dad. I do various things to help Martin. He goes to one hospital to get his suprapubic catheter changed by the uh, surgical team there. He goes to another hospital in the same group to see a pain specialist. He goes to his GP. He has a CPN. He is under consultant psychiatrist for his depression and uh, his uh, voices. But see, there's at least four different places, plus his GP makes five. If the doctor can drop round to these various places, it would be far easier, not just for Martin, but lots of other patients as well. My ideal situation would be if you could have a telephone number to ring a person and that person is the care coordinator and you would speak to them and they would know you as they think about you. This person would be able to act on your behalf. If you need another agency, they would be able to get the information and get it back to you. I feel that would work tremendously. At the moment, I'm not in a good place, but with the help of Holly and the services that I'm under now, I'm waiting for psychology, is it? Considering I was self-harming and whatnot, um, it seemed what seemed like a long time probably didn't within the services because there's quite a lot of people that need the services, I understand that. Um, but it was hard, it was a long process. I mean, we've got 
got a good relationship, so it's, it's quite a good, we've been quite lucky. So we'll see each other regularly, we'll have that regular point of contact and we're going to be setting up a group as well, which hopefully after this eight weeks, Shreen will be ready to, to kind of engage with, um, which will then further upskill her in how to manage your difficult emotions, yeah. started really with getting to know the patient in their own home so monitoring, assessing, getting to know them, what are their difficulties, what are their problems, what do we need to work on. Um, effectively basic just how we can best manage people in their homes in the community so largely we support with mental health you know getting them engaged in community groups for whatever their diagnosis is that's our main emphasis. But it's so happy that you know you can go away and speak to your team and put something in place that you go, I can help them. So it's known that you can help. You might not be able to help there and then and think, I wish I could put you in a bed. I wish we had some more facilities to be able to send you to a group for anxiety or be able to sort your social stressors and get you the support and accommodation you need. Ideally you would do all that, but knowing that you can, but you can maybe put something in place for short term and go, I've helped someone today. Yeah. You feel it's so amazing. As family nurses, we work very closely with social care. Um, we work very closely with housing. We work with enhanced midwives. We work with the midwifery teams. Um, we work with the GPs. So we'll be calling the GPs, um, you know, sharing if things need to be shared, always, you know, we'll be chatting to families and they may need some help with other areas. Um, so whatever their agenda is, we sort of help them reach those network of people and we'll bring them all together. We can be like that one person who the family can ring and we can coordinate things for them. I was only 17 when I got pregnant, so I think that helped because I didn't have a clue what I was in for. Yeah. And any concern we've got about Isaac, or when I was pregnant, I'd phone her straight away and she'd tell me what to do. So I think that helped. At any, at any point, any yeah. time of the day. This was very, um, I don't know, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Very like... Stable. Yeah, like it's, like it's your own unit, do you know what I mean? And because she's been there for so long supporting us, with this we know what to expect. And the services we get, we, we, like. What we see a lot with, with clients is they might ring and say, Michelle, I can't get an appointment to the doctors. I'm really worried. Uh, what do you think this is? But I've been trying all day to get through. So I can then try and make an appointment, but I can struggle as well. You know, so sometimes you think, if I'm struggling to get in touch with this social worker or this GP or this um, consultant or, you know, a follow-up appointment, you can see, <laughs> you can see the struggles that you know parents are having. If you know professionals are having that struggle as well between other services. So yeah, better communication.